Okay, so this is actually the 515, uh, totally empty and devoid of all parts. Um, the video out cable, video out port was broken, um, so I'll show you that video. Um, one of the initial videos I made there talks about the 515 in great detail. Um, and I'm going to show you that video first. There's a few discoveries I made along the way, and uh, one of the things actually that was happening was the original power supply blew up. I put a second power supply in, it would get so far on the disc, it blew up. Put a third power supply in, it blew up. Put a fourth power supply in, it blew up. And what I mean by blowing up is it just it was a loud, well it wasn't a loud, it was a small popping noise. So sort of, and that was it. Um, I have tested the power supplies, I've done everything I possibly can, I still can't figure out what the heck is going on with them. Um, but uh, I'm sure I, in a later video I can figure that out. I don't really want to put a fifth working power supply that I have into this machine because, uh, you know what I mean, I'm running out of power supplies and I could be a fault on the machine somewhere else. So one of the things I have done is I take out the motherboard that's in it. I have repaired the video port at the back because maybe there was a short cause there. I don't know. Um, but definitely something's going on and something's causing the problem. So the video you're about to watch is basically my initial thoughts on the whole thing. And... Uh, I actually managed to get the assembly in the middle sorted out and working, so I did actually get to get it to go from side to side, and uh, I'll show a few other videos of that, little bits I did here and there. So uh, so far we have the machine, we have the machine working, um, but we don't have it working perfectly. And uh, like I said, with the power supply, we'll have a major issue. Well, this particular so, machine, uh, anyway, uh, was for sale uh, on eBay there for fifty pounds plus postage. And I contacted the seller and I said, look, situation is yada yada yada. Um, he actually came back to me and said that, um, yeah, the, the laser assembly is in good nick, it's working fine. Um, you may notice that the motor is missing um, for a start. Um, the laser probably is still working on this, which is very unfortunate because these are so hard to get, it's not even funny. Uh, if anybody has any of these for sale, um, please let me know because uh, I need a few of these badly. Um, but... Never mind, that one's gone. Um, I actually have fixed another one, which I will show a video of. And um, when I say fixed it, it's somewhat working. We'll, we'll do it as, a, as, as the next video, just to show you. Um, this video is going to be just about this for a minute, just going through what, what happened or whatever. So, uh, yeah, he said he had it for a fair few number of years. He shipped it off, and unfortunately, it got damaged in transit. And it is unfortunate because uh, having a dual sided player is, is always good. Now, I haven't turned this machine on uh, for obvious reasons, um, but uh, we will do eventually turn it on and see what's going on with it. But uh, he basically said that he tried to open it up to see what was wrong with it. Um, basically, if he had to just change this, he probably would have solved this problem. But uh, that's neither here nor there. But um, he took out the carriage pieces and you know the bit that makes it go round and yeah now the top piece actually is interesting and um, this is the same top piece that is on the CLD 925 and um, I actually have a top piece off a of 515 that I bought off a guy funnily enough from Lithuania and um, I think I mentioned on here before he basically sold me one of these with the part sheared off it I said send it over to me and see if I can fix it the problem here is, which isn't on the other one I'll show you uh, on a later video, is that it's sheared off too far back that I can't actually get to the wire and re rewire it back up. Um, I may be able to do it in the future, so I'm going to hold on to this and, you know, see if I can. I have other motors that are, you know, I kept that were sheared off, so um, having no motor here is not really an issue. I actually have a spare motor for that. So if that laser is working and it's calibrated, as you can see, the glue is still in place. So that's probably calibrated fine. So... This could be working, I might get it working, so I'm going to hold on to this for the moment with the rest of the, the banjo the banjoed ones in it. And uh, you never know, I might get a few M holders in the future as well, which should also be handy. Anyway, that's that part. Um, yeah, so this piece here, as I said, I have a, a CLD 925 and I put the, the 515 onto this. It doesn't have these lovely ball bearing pieces on it. Um, it's not as nice as this one. So it would be great to put this onto my 925, which currently has the original uh, 525 one because it's 925 one. This piece here, this plastic ring here, it uh, broke. And this little catch here broke. Um, so basically this piece here slips a bit so that's an issue because if that slips off the disc is going to go flying out of the drive so I took it off and so this top clamp is going to be handy this machine here itself I've had a quick look at it as it is and I don't think I'm ever going to be able to get it to do dual side again the bottom uh, gearing is absolutely kiboshed um, so you know what I mean I don't have another one of these dual side machines I have the uh, was it 390, and um, which we showed here, take tear down and rebuild. So I have that all right, um, which is a um, 
that one is a NTSC only machine it won't do PAL so uh, you know I could do something there with that I suppose but I have another idea of this machine here really I don't really want to play with that other one and damage it or break it more but there's a few few things we could do anyway so uh, yeah that's the top this is the top uh, rail um, it actually goes that way around oh hold on let me see where that goes do 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 that would be slide in there yes it goes that way on top so basically when the laser assembly um, laser assembly would be running along here so it'll be coming along this way so laser assembly running along little 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 and it gets to the end bumps hits the switch and then the laser assembly down will basically go back and return back down onto the bottom again okay so that's a little micro switch to tell it when it's it's a little micro switch there to tell it when it's bumped and hit the end of the track so then it tells it to go back around again anyway um yeah this is not going to do dual slide again um like i said i could see I'm kind of torn between what I can do. I obviously have the 319, I always have the 390 machine, and the 390 machine will only do single sided. Sorry, do, will do both sides, but it'll only play back uh, NTSC discs. Um, now, most of the discs I have are NTSC anyway. Hmm. There's no digital out in that either, anyway, is there? No, no digital out in this. Ah. Biggest issue there would be if it would play back, if it would play back the Dolby Digital. Uh, not top of digital. The DTS with an optical out, we may be, it may be worth our while, but since it can't, we won't worry about it. Um, we leave the 390 alone. Best not to break it. It's working, so I'd rather not break it. There's actually a part on the other one that is gone that I'll take out of this actually. Um, needs repairing. The cable assembly at the back of the 390 uh, that we showed before. The part here, this piece here is on it. This is out of place here. Go back in there. I'll never get it back. I'll get it back in if I really want to. It's bits flying around in here a lot of place. Needs to go in under there. Yeah. It's a shame really this, isn't it? Yeah, there's a problem with the gears here as well. I have a I'd have to reorder Yeah, I, I, I tried to sort it out and uh, it wouldn't. It's actually it's even it's even hopping off up here, um, which it shouldn't be. Um could be that even, you know. It's just so this is basically the way it came to me. I didn't just disassemble it like this is the way. Well, this is the cable that goes from the main board, motherboard, to the top sensor. Uh, the piece I was showing you there to, to tell you when uh, the laser has got to the top. I actually cleaned this little holder here, actually, just in case you want it. Um, I got a remote control with it, which is great because I got a remote control, one of the other ones that doesn't work, so it's great to have a dual uh, AB remote control. Um, it's one thing, I've only got like one of them, you know, um, that's working, this one at least is working. I tried it out uh, yesterday uh, on the 590 and it's working fine, so that'll do me. Um, yeah, so he took that out, the issue here um, is I put the drive tray in. Let's see what happens. I'll show you now. Drive tray. Drive tray. This is the drive tray off this beauty. It ain't. So it's bringing the whole assembly up straight away, you see? So we have a cog orientation wrong here. Uh, like that should not be happening. Uh, that's actually after popping back into the wrong place again. Uh, so. It's going to require a mensa to figure this one out, I think. Um, I probably could figure it out. In a bit of time. Um, no reason why I shouldn't. But we've also got a problem. Ah, it just fell out altogether now. We've also got a problem with this cable. This cable is damaged. Uh, so that is going to be an issue with reading the disc. Um, so I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be too happy with that, you know. Um, I'll probably hold on to it anyway, just to ha ah, it's broken here too, you see. This is what's wrong with the 390 as well. Uh, this assembly is not proper anymore. Um, so that's gone, that's unfortunate, so we can't even fix that in our 390. Uh, our 390 is playing back discs, but the cable gets a little bit stuck on the back, um, which you may have noticed on the other video. 
Um, we'll hold on to this assembly for the moment. Uh, I'm presuming that the mower is working. I'm presuming that I can get this base working again at some stage. Uh, so I'm not going to throw this in the bin just Okay, yet. so at the back of the 515, we have the video out port, which is uh, busted. Um, this is going to be a, a bit of an issue. So uh, I'm going to take this off and uh, replace it. Um, I'm not going to be going through the actual video showing you how I did it because I didn't see the point in that really. Um, basically it's going to be a matter of sucking it off with this fella and then re-soldering a, a new one back on. And uh, Taking out the board on this machine is basically the same idea as taking the board out of the 310 we showed you on a previous video. Um, so uh, right, that's can okay. Well. So here we see the uh, old one, and uh, there's the two parts that are on, and it's basically broken at the uh, rear of the device. So uh, yeah, I'm basically going to take one of these off another board I have um, from another uh, PAL machine. So I might as well take it off that as anything else. And um, you can pick these up. Sorry about the folks in there. You can pick these up, I suppose, in the component shop. But we'll just use that for the moment, um, as it's a it's a PAL scrap machine. So, uh, okay. Okay, as I discovered, there's no uh, easy way to take these out because they're obviously placed in and then heated and these two little plastic legs are melted in place. Um, I've gotten this one out, um, but the uh, the board is cracked in half. But uh, it was already broken anyway, so it's not really a, an issue. Anyway, part is out, so I'll uh, go and uh, stick it into the other one. Okay, so a little bit of cleaning to do, but nothing major. So basically I put a bit of hot glue on the side of this uh, video peg because there was no really, no real way of getting this back in here. Um, if you've got a new, brand new one of these, um, you better put it in and then melt the plastic pegs on the rear, which are these two babies here. You can see one of them is, I popped in, but the other one I could. So I just put a bit of plastic glue on the other side there, so uh, there's no reason why that should be any issue. Now, so there you are. like it. Good enough. Okay, so no Clear idea this is going to work. But uh, I've hot glued the back of the carriage rail on the assembly. Um, but what was happening was uh, this piece here should be part of this, should all be the one piece. But basically this piece here had snapped off. So I basically put a bit of hot glue here in the hope that it will keep it in place. Um, normal glue, glue the two pieces together, I've tried all that. This keeps seeming to break so I sort of need, sort of need something here. It's going to give a bit of body to the system. So. Uh, the hot glue is great because it's basically molten plastic and um, so hopefully that little bit of filler will do the trick.